morning and welcome to Ark and Dove Presbyterian Church in Odenton, Maryland. I'm Brian Boudreau, the clerk of session here at Ark and Dove and your host in the lobby, the weekly program of the mission and ministry of the church. So today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we will be talking to Karen Leewald Williams from the Lighthouse. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what's happening this week at Ark and Dove. So as always, the in-person uh, sanctuary worship continues every Sunday at 1030. So make sure you make that RSVP. And just a reminder that Sunday school begins today and it will uh, be every week uh, during the 1030 service. And then we have the outdoor service every other week uh, starting at 915. You wanna check out the website for inclement weather. We will cancel uh, if the weather is bad. We have a couple of opportunities happening this week. Uh, one of them, the first one is um, the introduction to prayer. That's happening on September 23rd at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. So uh, that's good. we're gonna answer the question, how do I find some stillness and silence in my life? This is part of a, a larger session on, uh, on prayer. So please contact Christian Ed to sign up. Now, uh, Logos, it's almost here. So make sure that you get your children signed up for Logos. It's a one hour evening program on Tuesday evenings. Um, so uh, check that out uh, on the website to get signed up. Uh, Jen Roman and Julie Devers can, can uh, get you signed up for that. So the parents group Ice Cream Social has been rescheduled for September 24th at 6.30. So look in the archive for more details on that. Hope to see you there. Uh, the youth group uh, for middle school and high school will begin tonight, September 19th. So six to eighth graders will meet outside the church from four to 5 p.m. And the ninth through 12th graders will meet outside the church from five to 6.30 p.m. So we'll see you then. And Pastor John says, bring a friend. We also have the friendly seniors. We'll be going to London town on September 30th. I'm telling you this now because you need to sign up and make a reservation uh, for the guided tour. So Pastor Tim is also leading a series called a basic introduction to the prophets of the Old Testament. And the first session will be on September 21st um, at 7 p.m. via Zoom. So please contact Pastor Tim to get that invitation. There are two other sessions uh, on the 28th and the October 5th. A little bit further afield, you'll want to go ahead and mark your calendars for October, Sunday, October 3rd. At, after the 1030 service, we're going to have our ministry uh, mission ministry fair and church picnic. So uh, get, make sure you sign up for that. And we'll have uh, lunch together and get to learn more about uh, the different activities in the mission ministry uh, that you can sign up for. And if you have any questions, you can contact Lori Kronzer, the mission ministry elder, and Nicole Howe, our outreach and connections elder. So we have lots of regular activities uh, happening all the time. So check out the archive uh, to find out what those are. But I especially want to highlight the uh, fellowship after the service. Uh, you can email uh, fellowship at arkandove.org anytime during the service, and we will send you a link uh, to participate. Uh, hot off the presses, we just learned that choir will be beginning again. So um, if you're interested in joining the choir, please contact our music, di uh, music director, uh, Margaret McGillivray, and she will get you all the information that you need for our Thursday rehearsals. So today is the run for the lighthouse uh, down in Annapolis, and we have several ARC endeavors who are uh, participating in that. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to invite somebody from the lighthouse to talk about uh, this great initiative. So we've invited Karen Leewald Williams to join us here in the lobby. So Karen, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming on the program. Hi, thank you for having me. Karen, could you describe uh, for us a little bit about the lighthouse and what you do at the lighthouse? So I am the Director of Community Support and Homeless Diversion, um, which primarily takes place in the Safe Harbor Resource Center part of the Lighthouse. Um, so we now have a part of the building that's designated for the Safe Harbor Day Center. The top of the bell curve is our residential program where we have um, 60, when we're at full capacity, we have 60 residents and four apartments for families. But about three years ago, we decided that there was a need for some more day services for people that were unsheltered and people that were at risk of homelessness. But we do, we do a lot of um, people from the Laurel area and the Odenton area, um, a huge part of our, um, Population comes from the Glen Burnie area, the Brooklyn area. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely not just Annapolis. 
we have programs um, that are government funded um, that we work with those folks on, not only to keep them housed, sometimes they need financial assistance, but sometimes if we're rehousing them or housing them straight from homelessness, we have um, funds to use for first month's rent, security deposit, those types of things. But the beauty about those programs is they all come with um, case management support. So we're not just giving money, we're not just catching up somebody's rent, we're really working with folks and families, individuals to um, kind of determine how they got in that situation, you know, kind of unravel the layers and really try to, to work through how they got there so it doesn't happen again. Can you describe for us then what sort of is the 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 the, the support for that? What what does that look sure. like? So yeah, so you've got a facility. Yeah, so we are open. We are about a three room, um, a designated space in the lighthouse for um, folks experiencing literal homelessness. So they will come in um, and receive services, sort of basic need services. They can shower, they can uh, do their, their laundry, use our computers. Some will come in after roaming the streets all night, sadly, and just need a place to, to rest, respite. Um, and then when they're ready, we have case managers on site. Um, so sometimes it's an access to, to shelter programs. Sometimes it's an access to um, some abuse treatment programs. Um, some need hospital services. So. It's kind of a, we do a little bit of a triage and then we have people um, use the day center pretty much as, as they need. And, um, we also have a strong program of our at-risk folks. Mm -hmm. um, and those programs, we have a prevention program, a rapid rehousing program. Um, and right now, of course, we're also helping with the COVID funding um, to prevent eviction. So for those folks, they're, they're not stably housed, they're hanging on, and we try to prevent them from entering homelessness. How do people, people learn about this, this center? Um, how, how do they know that, that, that this is available? Um, word of mouth, really. Um, it's just over the years, it's kind of grown. Just people walking by someone that looks like they're in need of those services will direct them to us. Um, officers, you know, hospital discharge. There's, it's just kind of word of mouth that's gotten um, everybody aware of what we do by now. Can you talk a little bit about the homelessness uh, problem in Annapolis? I feel like it's growing um, since since the pandemic. I've, I've seen some, um, we are, serve up to about 30 people at this point a day from walk-ins. And those people live in cars. Um, they find anywhere they can each night to try to not get um, asked by officers to move along. Uh, many are in tents, many are hidden away in places you would never, you know, you drive by all the time. And I guess, I guess what I'm also hearing is that like homelessness does not necessarily look what you might expect it to look like. No, often people come out of their tents or their cars or roaming the streets, come here and shower and go to work, you know, and, and, Nobody even knows that that's how they've spent their night trying to find a safe place to sleep. So, so you're able to then offer a program that will hopefully help get folks out of homelessness. Um, and, and, and because in some cases they're, they are holding down a job and, and it's, it, it's not, not always what you might think it, it, it looks like. It's taken years and years and years to get to that point, right? So it takes, it's not a linear path for anybody. So it's really, I think the, the one thing we're really good at is meeting people where they are. Um, and I'm a firm believer in that healing happens in relationships. So the more people can come into our center, sometimes it takes a year before anyone's willing to share their story with us because they're, they don't trust, they're uncomfortable, they've had um, traumatic things happen in their lives. Um, but eventually over time, we build relationships and we work at their speed. There's no time frame. They can come in day one and say, I'm ready to make a change. I need to do this, this, and this. I need your help. Or they just drink coffee and shower for a year before they tell us anything. How are you able to support these services? A lot of our programs are um, very restrictive. You know, we're, the funds are, um, they go out to a person that makes a certain amount of money, a person that can produce um, 
five to eight documents, um, those types of things. So it's very hard sometimes to qualify families in sort of that box to receive assistance from those funds. So what we really need are unrestricted funds, right? So every single situation is different. Every single family comes with their challenges and they don't necessarily fit in that restricted box. So many times we have to turn people away in, in terms of um, financial assistance, we're unable to help them um, because of that. So whenever we can get private donations where the funds can be used just the way we need them for that individual situation, um, there's a huge need for that right now because there's, there's such an increase in need and every story is so vastly different that it's, it's very hard to qualify somebody for some of our programs. If you can clarify, when you said um, uh, private donations and unrestricted funds, what, what do you mean specifically? What are private donations? Private donations might come from an individual. They might come um, from a small group, um, from a church, from, and they, they might say, you know, we love your organization. You use this the best way you know how, and they just trust that we're gonna use it. Other people will maybe want a small earmark and say, you know, we, I want this to go to Safe Harbor Resource Center for the unsheltered, um, you know, so, and, and then we through case management find out the need and we use the money that's best gonna serve that individual. And so to be clear, those restricted funds then, these are restrictions that are imposed by the federal funding, state funding, county funding that you receive, right? By HUD. Mm -hmm. Do you. How has COVID-19 and, and, and all that affected uh, your operations, what you're able to do? And what does that look like today compared to even like a year ago? We never stopped. We, um, if there were a few months during the pandemic where we did not have our day center open, um, but we were meeting people in parking lots, um, you know, people would, we were in the offices. So we were doing a lot more over the phone, but we were also going outside and meeting people, helping them find access to showers. And we also offer a mail program for, for people who don't have addresses. So a lot of people rely on us for their mail, um, for their communication. And you know, if you're not getting your mail with all the important things about your benefits and your food stamps, um, you know, being about to be turned off if you don't fill this form out and those types of things, so all of that um, is super important, and that's our mail program is very popular. But and, and of course, the eviction um, moratorium, all of that um, being lifted and then put back in place and being lifted, uh, our phones were ringing off the hook with um, just trying to navigate all of that and what legal rights they had and whether they could be evicted and helping them find uh, financial resources. I think in 2020, just people affected by COVID, we stabilized and kept over about 250 families housed through um, case management and funding. For Annapolis, the size of Annapolis, that's a large number. It is, that was all over the county, yeah. What I keep learning about the lighthouse is that there are so many different aspects of the lighthouse. Um, it, 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 it's amazing. Could you, could you share, like this is just one Mm -hmm. sliver of that but there's there's other services that the lighthouse also does yeah i mean in addition to our residential program which in itself offers a lot of individualized programs for all of the residents um we have safe harbor and then our building employment success training program which is what we call our best program um that also kind of has a direct access to our restaurant the lighthouse bistro so the building employment success training um starts the first of every month. Um, I believe it's a three to four week program now of um, employment training. Every and then you get matched with a uh, volunteer, sort of a coach who helps you look for the job and kind of is by your side getting ready for those interviews. We have clothing for people, um, for those who are still going on face-to-face -face interviews. Um, and then if you're interested in the culinary, um, then we we have a direct, we have a restaurant that we can employ you in. The bistro was closed for a time during COVID. Is it open now? It is open now. Yeah, it was closed. They were busy too. They were um, preparing food for many different agencies and the um, uh, some of the hotels where they were sheltering folks to get as many people off the street. The county was doing that. 
So they were delivering food as well as delivering food. We stopped our community, uh, you know, dinners and lunches. So they were delivering boxed food for everybody to eat in their rooms. And I really love what the lighthouse does. And I love, I love it is, it really is a beacon uh, in the community. So um, I can't thank you enough for, for the work that you do uh, for Annapolis and for, for Anne Arundel County. So thank you for joining me today. I'm really glad you could, you could come on the program and, and, uh, you know, teaching the, the, the Ark and Dove community about what the Lighthouse uh, does. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. And to everyone out there, thank you for tuning in and joining us this week. We are always looking to get to know our community better. So if you have something you'd like to share during our Meet Ark and Dove segment, please reach out to us at worship at arkandove.org. More details about everything that we talked about today can be found in the archive or on the webpage. So stay safe, get vaccinated, and have a great week. And please join us in the Zoom fellowship after the service. The live stream service will begin in a moment.